In this video, we'll go over problems in week three assignment. First, let's look at uh, question number one in day one. This problem asks, in this diagram, how many triangles, different triangles do we have? First of all, it's clear. We have this small triangle, another small triangle, one more, one more, okay? So we have four small triangles, right? So when I say it's like, means the more triangles like this, right? This is clear. Then you might think the answer is four. Nevertheless, don't forget, we also have this bigger triangle that contains all these four small triangles. So the answer is four small triangle plus one bigger triangle is five. So in total, we have five different triangles. Four plus one equals five. Four small one plus this larger one. Question number two. Here we have uh, this kind of picture, which uh, sort of looks like um, a triangle. This is usually called Pascal's triangle. In Chinese literature, it's also called Yang Hui's triangle. You see, here we have a bunch of numbers. Uh, the first row, so if we look at the first row, so this is first row, right? Uh, this is row one. This is row two. This is row three, the third row. Uh, this is row four, the fourth row. And this is row five, the fifth row. Now, what we need to do is to decide if we go down further, right? We go to the sixth row. So let me put those um, uh, blocks. So this is our fifth row. This is our sixth row, right? So this is row six. And we need to find out what, what are the numbers that are on the sixth row based on the pattern. Let's observe this uh, so-called Pascal's triangle and see what patterns can we have. First of all, it's kind of clear. You see, if you look at two sides, they're all one, 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 right? And this tells us this one has to be one. We say, okay, then we just get this one has to be one. And this is also one, right? So this is kind of clear. Look at two sides. Uh, the main difficulty is to identify what are the numbers in the middle. And let's try to see here. How we get this two, right? You say, well, here I have one, and this is one, right? Uh, okay, one thing I observe is one plus one equals two. Uh, well, but we need to check whether this pattern also works for other rows, right? To verify this in the pattern. Let's look at three. Okay, so we check one, two, if I add together, so one plus two equals three, okay. And this is also one plus two equals three. All right, so this also works for from low uh, three to low four. And then let's further go down from low four to low five. Okay, we put uh, one plus three equals four and three plus three, right? Three plus three equals six, three plus one equals four. Okay, so this is indeed the pattern. The pattern is the number, so each number, equals the sum of two numbers above it, right? Like here, four is the sum of three and one. So it's look at the two numbers right above it and add them together, goes down. All right, so given this pattern, we say, okay, so then we know what number is, right? So if we go here, I just one plus four equals five, four plus six equals 10, six plus four equals 10, and four plus one is Five. Okay, so this gives us the numbers on row six. And this is the pattern for Pascal's triangle. So let me repeat. The pattern, the pattern is each number equals the sum of two numbers that are right above it. And by this rule, you can write out all rows of Pascal triangle. Question number three. Here we have a, a rectangle. Right? It's a four on the horizontal direction and two uh, on the vertical direction. And also here we have two seed, uh, two seeds the thrust. The problem asks: We divide this uh, tri this uh, rectangle into two parts, right? We have Caesar to cut into two parts. 
so that it, uh, these two parts, they have equal shape and size. And meanwhile, each of them contains one seed, the source. Well, at first you might think, oh, if you just want the uh, equal shape and size, maybe I can just do this, right? Okay, so then it's um, divided into two pieces of equal uh, shape and size, right? Both of them, both are both are squares. But nevertheless, this one does not fulfill the requirement that each piece contains one seed, right? So this piece has two, but this piece has none. So this one is not valid. Similarly, you say, okay, if I do things like this, it also doesn't work because one of them does not have seed the source. So that tells us we should be a little bit more clever to find the right way to cut it in order to fulfill the requirement. All right, to put it short, the way we can do is, is it, okay, is we want to uh, cut it, right? So it's okay, I want to cut one seed out and there you go all the way right here, right? And then you go down like this. Okay, by, by, if I cut along this, then I will just get two pieces of the same size. Right? I get two pieces of the same shape and size. So this is one piece and then this is another piece. Right? So these are two pieces. They are the equal size, equal shape. Right? Both of them are have shapes. So based, so this is like kind of L shape, right? Kind of L shape. You just load the other way, just rotate it. Okay, and also uh, you see uh, both of them have uh, this one has a seed and this one has a seed, right? So both of them have a seed, right? Okay, so you have a seed right here, and the other one is like if uh, if I uh, split them, right? So the other one is, uh, okay, so other one, the seed is right here, right? So they have equal size, both one have a seed, okay. Question number four. Here we have uh, A, B, C, D, E, four figures, and they all consist of four small uh, cubes, and small cubes, uh, they are glued together, now we want to paint the surface of these figures. The question is which one, which one uh, needs the least amount of paint? Now, what does it mean the least amount of paint? Because we are just painting the surface, right? You think of, um, so here I have a four, I have a four uh, cube, right? Okay, so I, I can do, I can do, uh, just though this is the B, right? I do things like this, put together, glue together, and then I paint its, uh, its surface. So basically this question is asking which one has the least size of the surface, or we use the word area, right? So least surface, if you look at the surface. And all we need to do is uh, because, the, because each surface, like uh, the surface all consists of uh, small squares, we just need to count how many small squares we have, right? So for example, let, let's see A, how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four. Okay, we have four here, but we also have four here. But don't and and uh, don't forget, you, we don't have. So this is four. This is four. But don't forget, we also have something. We have we have uh, we also have the back, right? So like this, this uh, you we have a cut cut this four. You have this four, and also you have this back four, and you also have another back four. All right, so you should have uh, four and uh, four there, and uh, also four on the other side. Um, for here. Okay, so you have four plus four plus four plus four, which is uh, 16, but then you also have two, right? On the side, you have, you have this one and you have that one, right? So two or two, one, two on the side. So it's a 16 plus two, which is 18, right? So, okay, so for this one, you have 18 small squares uh, on the side, uh, on the surface. Now let's say, how about this B? Well, B, you see here, you have four, and uh, don't forget again. So this is uh, this is B. You have you have four here, right? Okay. So you have four here, All right? So you have four here, and then you have don't forget you have four on the back, right? And then you have have uh, have eight on the side, right? Okay. So then you have four on. So he has two, 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 two. What you have is uh, four plus four, and then you plus uh, eight, which is 
16. So for the B, you have 16. Now the others, you, you, uh, uh, you can do the same thing and you can count this one is also 18 and this is 18 and this is also 18. The point is, we just count the number of squares on the surface. And when you do that, do not forget things on the back, right? Do not forget things on the back, right? So for C, like for example, for C, you have like this, I put like that, right? And then don't forget all the surfaces. You have to count them, right? And also intuitively, so the answer is B. So the answer is B, right? So by carefully cal cal uh, computing, cal uh, counting the number of small squares, we get the B has the smallest size of the surface. So that's then it requires uh, the least amount of paint. A2, question number one. For this problem, when you count the number of triangles, squares, and rectangles, and circles in the following figure. So here, when we say rectangles, means those rectangles which are not squares. So keep in mind, a square is a special rectangle when the weights and lengths are the same, that is a square. Okay, first of all, let's look at um, triangle. We have one and a two. Let's see whether we have others. No, that's all. Okay, so we have two triangles. Now let's see squares. We have one square here and a bigger square here. And let's see, do we have more? Yeah, we have one more here. So we have three squares. Okay, how about rectangles? We have uh, one rectangle here. And also we have a big rectangles here. You see, these two rectangles, they are not squares. Okay, so we have two rectangles which are not squares. And also circles. Okay, uh, that's where circles. Uh, this is one circle, and this is two. Uh, this is three, uh, this is four. Okay, so we have uh, four circles in total, and that's all. Question number two. What else the pig is going to cut a pizza? And if we'll use three cuts, the question is, by three cuts, what is the largest number of pieces of pizza that the pig can get? Okay, let's see. Um, well, one card, of course, we can do this. And then uh, let's do uh, two, the second card. Well, obviously uh, we can do this, it's the second card. Now you see here, what we get is one, uh, two, three, and a four, right? We get a four pieces. How about uh, the third card? Well, some of you might think, okay, for the third card, it's natural to think, oh, third card, I just cut it through the center. Now, if we do that, let's see how many pieces we have, right? We we'll just add, okay, I add one more. So this is five, and then we get, uh, this is five, and then we get a six. Well, in total, you say, oh, the answer is six pieces. However, that's not the largest number of pieces we can get. The correct answer is seven, which is one pieces more. Okay, the question is then how should we do the cut? Well, what we should do is instead of go through the center, we just uh, load down and do things like this, cut. Okay, and then you see, oh, well, I'll just have one pieces in the middle, which is seven, right? We seven. Of course, I can do a better, I do this and do this, and then you cut uh, in the middle. I know you're in the, in the middle, but you come a little bit lower, okay? And then you get uh, uh, seven pieces. So let me redo it. So the question is, we can do seven pieces by this. Now I can do better. So let me do it, redo it. We do is this, uh, this, uh, and uh, okay, let's see. Okay. Can do this, uh, this, and this okay so this probably look better right okay so the, the point is it's uh, uh seven pieces 
Now, question number three. Here we have um, a bigger rectangle. It has, uh, in total, we have, it consists of uh, 40 small squares. And then we have this red region and the blue region. The question is, which one is uh, larger in terms of size? Or if you are familiar with the word area, we can also say, which one has the larger area? Okay, now, how we compare the two? When you first look at the, the red one and the blue one, it's not so clear which one is the larger. Then how should we compare them? The trick is both of them kind of consists of a red, uh, consists of a small, right? So here we have those uh, small squares. So what we need to do is just com compute right, how many small squares each one have, right? Okay, so the trick is compute number of squares, small squares each one has, right? All right, let's do the red one first. For the red one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so the red one has ten small squares. All right. Now, how about the blue one? So this is for red one. How about blue one? Blue one, we have one, two, three, four, and five. All right. Have five small squares in the middle. And then it also has some um, uh, small triangles on the top and uh, on the bottom. And then you see, well, but then how can I handle uh, those uh, small triangles? And the trick is, as we see in um, a previous problem, in I think in week two, a uh, practice, the point is those small squares, they can combine those small triangles, they can combine into small squares. All right, so say, if you look at this two, I can move this one to right here. And then you see, I can combine the two small triangles into a small square. All right, so the point is, these two, they can combine into one, one small square. So I can say, okay, there's six. Then the two can combine into one, that'll be seven. And these two, they can combine into one, which is eight. And these two combine into it's nine, and these two combine into 10. All right, so the point is by uh, reposition those uh, small triangles, we find the blue region also has 10 small squares. All right, so we get 10 equals 10. And the conclusion is in terms of size, the red one and the blue one, they are equal. Question number four. Okay, so the problem says here, we have uh, two chains. One goes to this direction and the other one goes to that direction. Each one has 20 cars. They are labeled as you see, uh, car one, car two, car three, car four. All right. And then the other ones, again, car two, uh, one, two, three, four. Now let's look at the car that labeled as 10, right? So the 10 car, okay? And this is also, we say, okay, so we have, this is uh, the car 10, right? Number 10. Now, well, initially uh, this uh, for the above chain, the uh, car 10 is here, but the lower chain, the car 10 is here. Now one goes to this direction, right? The other one goes to uh, the left, one goes to the right. Well, at some point, you know, the car 10 on the above, the car 10 on the below, they will opposite to each other, right? So they will opposite to each other. Uh, let's draw it. Oh, we can draw it. Okay. So first of all, I draw the ten on the uh, the uh, chain on the above. So this is ten. Uh, this will be nine. Right. So this will be eight. Okay. And then you go uh, to this um, uh, the chain head. Right. Okay. And this will be eleven and be twelve. Okay. So here thirteen. Uh, he has 14 and 15. Okay, and then you go to the last one, which is 20. All right, so that's the chain on the above. Then we look at the chain below. All right, so the 10, the number 10 car are opposite to each other. All right, so then this one will be uh, nine. Okay, and this will be uh, eight. 
uh, this will be seven. Okay, so here is uh, 11, uh, there's 12, right? Okay, and then you go to uh, the chain uh, 20, right? And here is, then you go six and you go five and da, 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 right? this is, you go to the chain head, right? Go to the chain head. Okay, so this is a chain which is on the below. Now here, what we have is uh, the car 10, they are opposite to each other, right? So the car 10 are opposite each other. And the question asks, uh, if we look at the, uh, the number two chain of the chain, the uh, number two car of the chain below, okay? So which is right here. So if I look at the number five, number five, all right, it's number five. If we look at the number five car of the chain below, and then I compare it with the chain uh, above, which one it is opposite. And if we look at this, okay, we find the opposite one is car 15. So car 15 of the top chain is opposite to car five of the, of the below chain. When the uh, car 10 of the, uh, of the above chain and a car 10 of the below chain are opposite to each other. So the answer is 15. A3, question number one. The problem says a monkey has collected nine items from a farmer's market. So here we see these uh, nine items. And we need to help the monkey to divide these uh, nine items into two different categories. Now, when you look at these uh, nine items, it's kind of clear, right? You, you see some of them are fruits like watermelon, cherry, grape, and apple. And the, the, the others, uh, and uh, some are vegetables, right? Like carrot, broccoli, mushroom. All right, so what we should do is just divide them into the group of um, fruits and the group of vegetables. All right, so let's see the fruit first. Now this is fruit, right? It's um, watermelon, cherry, uh, grape, uh, pear, and um, uh, apple. Okay, so here we have the group. So this is group of fruits. Now, and the remaining four are vegetables, right? So here we have the carrot, and then we have uh, radish, right? So we have carrot, radish, mushroom, and uh, the broccoli, right? Okay, so here we have, this is a uh, vegetable. Vegetables. So this is how we, um, how we split these nine items. Question number two. Here we have uh, several things and we need to label uh, which are cubes, which are rectangular boxes that are not cubes. Okay, keep in mind, a cube is a special rectangle box and we need to identify rectangle boxes which are not cubes and also balls and cylinders. All right, let's do uh, cubes first. Uh, clearly we have, this is a cube, right? And this is also a cube. Uh, and how about rectangle box? Right, so this is a rectangle box. Rectangle box. And this is also a rectangle box. And uh, the microwave is a rectangle box, right? Okay. And then balls, right? Here we have, this is a ball. And this is the tennis ball, right? A basketball, a tennis ball. And then we, uh, we have, okay, what else? And then we have, this is a cylinder. Uh, the Coca-Cola can is a cylinder. And this is just standard cylinder, right? All right, so, they, so we have um, labeled all those things in terms of uh, their shapes. Okay. Question number three, part one. Here we have an um, equation uh, that is made of um, matching sticks. <clears throat> the equation says five plus seven equals two. And we know this is obviously is wrong because five plus seven should be 12. And the question is, we need to remove, we need to move, not remove, we need to move one match stick and put it to uh, another position so that we'll get a correct equation. All right, so let's see how we do this. 
Well, first of all, if you look at the eco sign, we know, okay, we cannot change the eco sign. The eco sign has to be there. Then you say, how about the right hand side? Same. We are not going to change it too, right? We just do a, do a, a different uh, choice and to see which one uh, works out. Okay, let's say we leave the two there. Okay, so here's seven, suppose, right? We say we leave the seven also there. We don't, don't touch seven. And then you ask yourself, how can I go with from seven to right, make it work? And one thing you know, in order to relate seven to two, you say, okay, uh, I can do is nine, right? It's, it's nine minus seven equals two. This is correct. And the question is, are we able to make things like this, nine minus seven? The answer is yes. So that's how it works, right? We say, okay, what do we do is we just move. We say, okay, what are we going to do is we just move this uh, match stake to right here, right? You can put it here, right here. And then this uh, addition sign becomes a minus, and this one becomes nine, right? So it's because nine minus seven equals two. And this is a correct equation. Now let's look at uh, uh, part two. The part two, here we have equation. It's nine minus three equals six. This is correct. There's nothing wrong with this. And the problem asks you to move again, you move one chop stake and put it in, in different position so that we can get another correct equation. If we follow uh, what we did um, as the previous one, you say, okay, here we have an eco sign. You cannot touch it, just leave it there. And here is a six. Say, okay, I'm going to just do a try. Right? It's okay, the six is stay there and three stay there. Then you ask yourself, how can I go from three to six? Right? So what's the one thing you can do is, you're right, you say, okay, so three plus three equals six. Then when we look at this picture, are we able to move one chop stake to come up with three plus three equals six? The answer is yes. Right? So what we're going to do is, okay, I just remove this one, move this one to right here, and I will get an equal sign, right? I move there, okay, I got an equal sign. And when this one comes, so what we end up is three plus three equals six. Okay, so this is one way to do it, but it's not the only way. There's another way to handle this. Uh, let's look at the second way. The second way, is, remember for the first one, for the previous one is, uh, we, for the, for the last one, we just uh, uh, leave it there, right? So, okay, we are not going to touch the right-hand side. But for this, uh, for the second um, approach, we can change the one on the, the six on the right-hand side. So this one is a bit tricky. So what you can do is, uh, let me erase this. Okay, so let's look at the second one. Now the second one, what you can do is, we can change this one right here. I can put this stake all the way to right here. So this is the second approach. And then you will get, what do we have? We will get is eight minus three equals five, which is also correct. All right, so for this problem, we have two ways to come up with two other uh, correct equations. Question number four. The problem says the pizza has cut into equal slices and some pieces have been eaten. The question is how many? How many have been eaten? When we look at the picture, it's kind of clear, right? It's obvious. More than half is left. All right. So then we ask ourselves, okay, if more than half is left, and then which half, right? So what is the half? Or uh, before uh, those pieces were eaten, how many pieces do we have? Okay, here are the key is because we already know more than half is left, let's find the middle line, right? Let's find one middle line. Okay, so say I take this middle line. We say, okay, it's clear. This is a middle line, right? So this line will cut the pizza into uh, two um, uh, equal parts. 
And then we can count how many do we have? We say, okay, so this one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we get each half has six. Therefore, this half shall also be six. How many left? We have one, two. Okay, so how many are gone? Uh, we should just six minus two equals four. So four are eaten. Now we, we can join, right? So if I join, we say, okay, uh, that's just what we have, right? And then we have three, four, and a five, and a six, right? And this four are eaten. So we have four, right? So this is uh, um, uh, one way to solve the problem. Another way to solve this problem, what we can do is we say, okay, let's just finish the circle. And then we extend those lines. Okay, so I have this line here, right? So, okay, I can extend this line uh, right here. I just extend it and here. And then I extend this line and then we extend this line. And then you see, okay, uh, that's it. And you just get uh, four more pieces. One, two, three, four. Now I say, how about this line? Well, this line just the middle line, right? It does not go into this uh, missing part, right? Okay, so by this approach, you can also get, it's if we complete the full pizza, we also get it's one, two, three, four, four pieces that has been eaten. A4, question number one. For this problem, a baby penguin wants to cut the figure on the left-hand side which is this one. And then uh, for that, to get two pieces, and then he can uh, rearrange the two pieces to form a rectangle. The question is, how should he do that? Uh, there are different ways to cut the, uh, the shape on the left-hand side. Uh, one way is, uh, you can just cut like this. Right? So, okay, I cut like this, and then move this shape, I cut this piece, move the shape to here, and we get a rectangle. This is the rectangle we can get. Okay. So this is one way. Or what you can do is, you say, okay, we can just cut uh, like this. We say, okay, well, I can cut anything in, uh, in the middle, right, anywhere in the middle. And then we cut this part. All right, and then we move this part. Okay, we cut this part, right? So we get this part. And then, uh, hold on. And then we rotate it and move it to here. What we get is this. Again, just we cut it, rotate it, and move to the other part. All right, and they share this common side. Now, again, for this one, we get a rectangle. Okay, so there are different ways to accomplish this mission. Question number two. All right, question number two says, if we look at the fourth row, we have uh, three pieces of paper. They have different shapes, and they want to fold uh, uh, these three pieces of paper to form shapes on the second row. The question is, which one goes to which one, right? Now, if we look at the first one, okay? So first one basically is like this. Uh, we have, which is part of a circle, right? But there's a small circle right here. I omit this. If I fold this, I'll get something like this, which we call a cone. But remember, here I omit a circle here. Now you can fold the circle, and this will give us the cap. Right? So we say, okay, and that's what we have. So we'll get this one, we'll go to the cone. Then how about the middle one? The middle one, basically what we have is a rectangle, right? We have two circles on the top, and uh, one circle on the top, and one circle on the bottom. And if I fold this, uh, this uh, uh, rectangle paper, right? if I fold like this, if I fold, then what do I get? I just get a cylinder and two circles will form, if I fold two circles, will form the, uh, the uh, two caps, where right? one is on the above, one on the bottom. So what we get is a cylinder, all right? So we say, okay, so this one goes cylinder and this one, we have done this before. Uh, this, which is, if I fold, will give us a Q. 
skilled. Okay. Question number three. It says uh, at the beginning, Jack has five dollars and his sister has one dollar. Right. L let's put it down here. Okay. So at the beginning. Uh, hold on. Okay, so at the beginning we have, uh, this is Jack and uh, his sister. Right? So this is, uh, let's say day zero, which is the beginning. So at the beginning, Jack has $1 and uh, he uh, has $5 and his sister has $1. And then start from tomorrow, we say day one, right? So, okay, start from day, uh, day one, this is day one. Day one, uh, their mom will give Jack $1 and his sister $2 every day. All right, Jack $1, so you add $1, you just get a six, right? So add a one. And his sister add a two because $3. Okay, and then you see the question is, after how many days they will have the same amount of money? All right, so we just uh, uh, keep doing this. All right, so the, here we have, this is uh, day two. I uh, get one more, Jack will be seven, and his sister get two more, will be five. And then we say, okay, then I have, um, we have, uh, uh, this is uh, day, day three, right? So day three, Jack will get uh, eight, one more will be eight. Uh, his sister, two more will be seven, right? So this one more, this is two more. Okay, now let's get day four, day four. Jack get one more will be nine. And sister get two more, right? Sister get two more will be nine. All right, you see, they are the same. Both of them are nine and nine. Okay, so it's both of them are nine. So the answer is day four. After four days, both of them have nine dollars. Okay. Question number four. This is a logic reasoning question. It says five animals, cat, dog, donkey, mouse, and squirrel, they live in the townhouse, show in the following picture. It's five colors for each. Donkey, it says donkey lives in the red house. All right, so obviously we just should put donkey here. So donkey is right here, so the red one. And squirrel opens the second house from the right. So this is from right, right? Second house from the right. So this is the first house from right, the second house from the right, okay, the squirrel is right here. Squirrel. All right. And then it says, um, um, if the cat, cat does not live next to the dog, but has to share a wall with mouse. And who lives in the purple house? And we say, okay, is it possible? Can we put a cat here? We say, okay, can cat be here? Well, that's impossible. Why? Because a cat has to share a wall with a mouse. If a cat is here, then we know cat only share a wall with squirrel, which is not valid according to the requirement. So we know, okay, cat is not here, right? So cat is not here. So cat has to be here or here, okay? I don't know which one. And this said, because we know cat has to share a wall with a mouse. So if a cat is here, the mouse, will be here, right? And if a cat is there, the mouse will be here, okay? So in other words, uh, for the middle two, we can have either cat, mouse, or mouse, cat, because they have to share a wall with, um, uh, with each other. All right, okay, so then where is the dog? The dog has to be here, so this is, the dog. So dog is in the purple place, right? Okay, so that's the dog. Who dog lives in the purple house. A5, question number one. The problem says we have a load that is uh, seven meters long. And then uh, each end has a guard. And, and there are other guards that uh, stand on the load and the distance between every two adjacent guard is one meter. The question is, how many guards are there? All right, let's draw the picture, which is uh, easier for us to see uh, what happens. All right, so here we have, uh, this is 
one guard, right, standing on the other uh, two ends, one guard. And then the next guard, it's one meter. And then this one meter. And then is one meter. And then this is one meter. And also we have this is one meter. And this is one meter. All right, so how we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, but the total is seven meter long. All right, so we need one more meter. So it's right here. So this is one meter. Okay, and this is um, seven meter long road. Uh, this is the guard on the left end. And this is the guard on the right end. All right, so how many do we have? Okay, so we just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in total, we have eight guard, eight guards stand there. Question number two. Here we have uh, four sequences of numbers. And we need to identify the one that has different pattern than others. Let's look at the first one, right? The first one we see, okay, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so each time you just go up by one, right? Okay, so just increase by one. How about the second? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Also, it's okay, you just increase by one. Then let's look at C, two, but two, what's, if I increase by one, what should be the next? It'd be three. Well, however, here we want to have is four. So it increased by two. In other words, it skips one, right? Two to four, skip three. Four to six, skip five. So each time we go up, not by one, but by two. Let's look at the last one. Tw uh, last one, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Again, each time goes up by one, just the right one, the one right after eight. Okay, and which one is different? Obviously, C is different. Question number three. Here we have um, uh, five cats, Adam, Agda, Charlie, David, and Basil, and each of them is, uh, is fishing, and uh, their fishing lines are, in, are, ten, are mingled with each other. The question is, which one caught the fish? How should we do this problem? Uh, one straightforward method, you say, oh, maybe I just start from each one and say Aiden, right? I Aiden, I, I uh, uh, we just follow Aiden's line, right? just go around to see where it eventually goes, right? You say, okay, let's do that. You say, okay, if I, if I go with Aiden's line, I say, okay, this is Aiden's line, right? I go uh, chase this, I say, okay, da, 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 da. I find, oh, it's an empty hook. So it's not added, it must be someone else. Then I try, maybe I try um, uh, adding up by this the same method and I follow his lines. You can do that and eventually we should be able to find the right cat. However, this is not the most efficient way. Okay, so what's the most efficient way? The most efficient way is we start from the fish because that's what we want to find out and we choose Backward, all right, so I say, okay, so cat fish, I chase backward to see, eventually it leads to who, right? So I, okay, I chase backward, carefully go around here, here, right? So, okay, so go here and then go to here. I go da, 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 all the way to, ah, it's Dave, it's David. So David caught the fish. Question number four. Here we have a so-called stand step figure. It consists of white blocks and the black blocks. Uh, we need to find on the sixth row, right? So on the sixth row, how many black blocks we have, right? Black squares, or we say black squares. Okay, let's see. This is the row one, right? Okay, so here we have a row one, first row. How many do we have? We say, okay, we only have zero, right? So they have zero black squares. Um, how about row two? Row two, we have uh, we have just one, right? We say okay, we just have one. All right, so it's one black. And uh, there we have a row three. This is the third row, right? How many times do we have? We have one, two. Okay, so we have two blacks. 
black squares. Now let's look at uh, the fourth row, row four. How many do we have? We have one, two, three. Okay, so we have three black squares. Now, if you compare, you say, okay, compare the low number. So low number is one to zero, two to one. So row two has one black, row three has two black, row four has three blacks. And if we, I find the pattern, right? So you can see the pattern. The pattern is basically the number, okay? So the number, we say, all right, so it's the number of black squares equals the low number minus one, right? So three, four, two, three, one, two, zero, two. Okay, so then the uh, the low six, the six, so how many number of square implies the number of uh, black squares will be equal to six minus one, which is five, right? Which is five. Uh, if you don't see the pattern, then of course you could do is just finish the square, right? Okay, finish this um, this thing. Let's do it, right? Let's do it. Okay, so if I finish the square, if I finish um, uh, this uh, picture, okay, so here we get it's okay. So then we go to, uh, this is row five, and then by the pattern, this is black, this is black, this is black, this is black. Okay, how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, four, four right? Okay, and then we go to row six, one, two, three, four, Right, low six. All right, so this is the low six, and let's mark those black ones: the black, 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 black. How many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. All right, so again, we get is five, uh, which is consistent from what we got through identifying the pattern. So the pattern is. Let me repeat: the pattern is the number of black squares equal to the num low number minus one. So by the pattern, we can we can identify, say, how about the 20th row, right? So the 20th row, if I have a 20th row, how many black squares there? It's 20 minus one, 19, right? So then we don't have to draw uh, the, the whole picture to, to count it manually.